Hello guys. How are you? So today I simply want us to discuss about delegation in leadership and management. So please, what I'm asking you is to share the broadcast so that others can benefit as well. Hello and uh, welcome. So today in this morning, we'll discuss about delegation. And the reason why we are having this presentation rapidly is to basically assist those that are writing the final exam. So in delegation, we'll define what is delegation, we'll explain uh, the principles of delegation, the advantages for delegation, and the disadvantages for delegation. Then from there, I'll explain uh, uh, the qualities of a good word manager. So, you know, we have all delegated and we do delegate every day to some with a habit, to some, they usually delegate because they have a lot to do. So before I define delegation, we first need to understand what delegation is in simple terms. So delegation, it means asking someone to do the duty or the task on behalf of yourself. For instance, Mweba Namayo, Omunangu Mweba Kashana, now quarter sister over. And you know to say you're supposed to attend to a party for your friend. I don't know if it's a wedding. You're supposed to go at the market. You're supposed to do a lot of things during that particular day. So you ask your young sister to do the duty or the job on behalf of you. So that means you have delegated. So now, how do you define delegation? So delegation is the process of assigning authority and responsibility to an individual in order to do the task on behalf of an organization. Let us try to brainstorm the definition. Delegation is the process of assigning. Now, why do we call delegation as the process? Because you don't simply just wake up from bed. No. You sit down and start thinking to say, So delegation is the process of assigning authority and responsibility to an individual to do the task on behalf of an organization. When you tell someone to do the job on behalf of you, you have given them the authority and the responsibility. So that's how you define delegation. Now, what are the principles for delegation? When we simply talk about the principles, we are simply trying to say, what are the rules or the things that you're supposed to follow before you delegate? Okay? Because there are principles in delegation so the first one is determining what to delegate so when you're writing in an exam you're supposed to expand this point when we say determining what to delegate you expand it and when you expand it if you have enough time you can give an example so this involves writing down all the activities that you're supposed to do then you evaluate which activity you can delegate to. For instance, uh, you know, if you have enough job to do, like tomorrow, which will be on Monday, 
you begin to write down what you're supposed to do. Oh, I'm supposed to go at the market. I'm supposed to go at school. I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do that. So when you write down all the activities you're supposed to do, then among those activities, you try to assess, which ones can I ask someone to do on behalf of myself? That is the principle number one. And the second principle, choose the right person to delegate to. And the key here is simply saying that the key in choosing the right person to delegate to, it's with matching the skills and attitude to the task at hand. You know, you, you basically just don't delegate the job anyhow. You're supposed to assess, does this person have the skill in doing this job? How is the attitude of this person in doing this job? So you're supposed to match the skills and the attitude to the task at hand. For instance, Kwadi, wa mona foundation, that you were the foundation to say, can you can you rate your patient? With any foundation, there are some video drama procedures. Okay? So you basically assess, does this person have the skill in doing this? Does this person know how to cook? Does this person have the attitude to this job? So when the person has got the good attitude to the job, then you can tell them to do that, uh, that duty. Then the other principle is clarify the desired result. So results should be clear to allow the employee to use his or own creativity to accomplish the task. For instance, uh, if they simply say we need to find a uh, you have uh, vaccinated maybe 10,000 babies against the uh, DPT. When you simply give them the target to say 10,000, as an in charge, the in charge is going to look for another alternative so that she accomplish or so that she accomplish or he accomplish the target that has been given to them for instance now remember to say uh, you need to have a target of uh, 10,000 babies that you vaccinate the in charge will simply come up to say oh there are uh, women that deliver in the society they don't visit the health facility so what is the in charge going to do the in charge will allow the nurses to go for outreach so that they can vaccinate those people that cannot afford to come at the clinic. And if you reach the target. So that is the principle. And then the other one is uh, defining the employee's responsibility and authority. You need to simply tell the employee what they are supposed to do or the subordinate. You tell them, if you are going to to you tell them, oh, your duty here is to only paint the house. Do not touch our socket. Awe. Then you also tell them the day that you, you expect them to finish their job. Then the last one is follow up. And of course, managers must make a follow up to see if the subordinate they have accomplished the task or not. So those are the principles of uh, delegation. Do we have anyone with a question? Please, if you have any question, you can simply just uh, post the question. From the principles, we move on to explain the advantages and disadvantages of delegation. Now, this question comes as uh, 40 marks, if I'm not mistaken. Now, how do you obtain the 40 marks in an exam? This is very crucial. The secret is that, for instance, when you write the advantages, then you say uh, it relieves managers from pressure. It relieves managers from pressure. You underline that. Then you explain how delegation relieves the managers from pressure. 
You just simply say, when managers delegate the duty or the job to subordinate, they will not do it on their own. And as a result of that, the managers will be relieved from pressure. For instance, you give an example, or to illustrate, you give an example. A nurse in charge who has uh, numerous duties to do, such as to attend a meeting, to order medications, to instruct, to supervise nurses, she can ask the other nurse to supervise the fellow nurses. And she can also instruct a nurse to order the medication. And this is going to allow the nurse in charge to be relieved from the pressure. You can give an example, whichever way that you feel. The other one is job satisfaction. Of course, we know when they have delegated you to do the job that you so much love, you know, you do it perfectly. Then the other advantage is motivation. You know, delegation motivates subordinates. And we all know to say, for instance, Ulakabila Mukuba in charge. Deloba Kusara to say you are the in charge. You'll be motivated to work extra hard. You'll be motivated to study hard so that one day you become the in charge. Okay? Then the other one is that uh, performance of workers group. You know, delegation improves the performance of workers group. What this simply means is that there are some people that cannot work as a team. So, when they give you the job to perform as a team, you are going to learn the skills on how to work together. So, th basically, those are the advantages of delegation. I've not explained them in details. Let's talk about the disadvantages. Number one, fear of losing the position. This one is more common. You know, you discover that uh, some managers, they don't allow the subordinates to do the job on behalf of them because they fear of losing the job or the position. How? You discover that the subordinate knows how to do that job very well than the manager. So the manager knows to say, if I give Uyumwa a chance, Mukumbombera Pali Mirimo, Alampo Kenchitoy, then you see the manager will just be doing the job on her own or on his own because they are scared that. If I give an opportunity to this person, he position Balampoka. That is number one. Second is lack of trust. Managers do not easily trust the subordinate. And as a result of that, they do the job on their own. Even you, when they appoint you as an in charge, you cannot simply just start trusting anyone to say, do this job for me, do this job for me. It's not easy to trust someone. The other uh, disadvantage for delegation is that it promotes laziness. If you have order for me medication, can you go and do that? Can you do this and that? You are just seated. You can't do anything. It will promote it. Laziness. So over delegation promotes laziness among managers. Okay. So those are some of the disadvantages. Initially, they'll ask you for four advantages and four disadvantages. Then the other one, you can simply say it is time consuming. Managers, they feel to say, Delegation involves a lot of time, such as explaining what's supposed to be done. Hence, they will end up doing the job on their own. An example that I can give you is that Kunganda, I don't know a difficult uh, dish or relish that you want to cook. Wala mwe watu sewa, wame nshia namba wanu kuya funyamo, waiti. Waingisha mwe namba tu. Waleka fiabila, fiabila, wafunya moyaria, waivika mwe dish, waisuka, waisuka, geno, waivika mwe pot. Wamwana tuze, hmm, 
Uyu mundu muku mshitri explain ya ma steps yon si haya. Anara posa fenshi. Ushita. Then at the end of the day, you just simply say, Lekaf, nara ipika ne mwini. Time consuming. So even managers, they know to say, delegating the job to subordinate, it involves a lot of time. It may involve training a subordinate, sending the subordinate to school. And that is time consuming. So they will do the job, the job on their own. So those are the advantages and uh, the disadvantages. We move on now to explain about the qualities of a good word manager. What are the qualities that you're supposed to possess for you to become a good word manager? Uh, the first one is knowledgeable. Oh, sorry. The first one is uh, intelligent or intelligence, whichever way that you can put it. Intelligent, intelligence. So this does not necessarily mean that someone needs to be knowledgeable. When you simply say intelligent, it does not mean that you have to be knowledgeable. But as a manager, you need to have a good common sense where you are able to assess to simply say, ah, pata, pata, fili, we know if into. that's how a manager should work. It does not mean that you follow a quarter data. Ah, we. You just basically need to have a good common sense. Another quality is persuasiveness. This one talks about as a manager, you need to have you need to be able to win others so that they will be accepting the decision you make. You know, if you don't have the spirit to win others, they will always be against your decision. Mwapanga decision to simply say, Lelo, buonse tatule bomba. Now, because you, you are not taukwe teria quality ya kuina abantu, wana kukani na tuse awe fetule ya muku bomba. Okay, so persuasiveness. The manager needs to have the capacity to win others so that they'll be able to accept the decision that he or she makes. From there, we have integrity. Now, what is integrity? The managers needs to set standards that command respect of others on the world as well as himself or herself. A classical example that I'm going to say is that as a manager, if you are a male manager, make sure that the former student, make sure that the former nurses, no former patient. That is going to, and make sure that you are also respecting your fellow workers. So when you are doing that, you are actually making your words to be respectful. The nurses that are working on, on duty, or the nurses that are working on your word, they will respect you because of the, the rules that you have set. Even the people that are coming to your word, they will be able to respect your workers. Remember, Valanda Tamesh, Yakonkom follow. So if there's no integrity in the manager, everything will fall down. Or in short, integrity means doing the right thing even when no one is watching you. The other one is loyalty. As a manager, you need to be able to, to defend your subordinate against external forces. Not in the of a manager. By some kushauta wa vanesi venu. You are just there looking at your at your ness. Even when your ness is right, you need to be able to defend your subordinate against external forces. If people come from somewhere else, they begin to shout at your nurses. You need to come up as a manager and do it in a polite way, not in a fight way, not in a polite way. You'll be able to defend your nurses against external forces. Then your nurses will be able to simply say, however, manager. Even when you're a student, you become a group leader, Kuwadi. When you're a group leader, Kuwadi, why some kushauta ba student 
uh, Abanove, you are the leader of the group. You need to be able to defend your team. Even Umunove na, na Taretere sick note, defend your team. Then you are the good manager. Then the other one is judgment. Okay? Judgment simply means you need to know the strength and the weakness of the people that you work with. Not that our refumina kumayadi will favor them. Our refumina kukomboni tuaraba panika. No, know the strength and the weakness of the people that you work with. Then you'll be able to understand each one individually. So, those are the qualities of uh, a good word manager. Not quite many. Those are some of the few. Now, another question we can ask you is, what are the things you need to consider when you're coming up with a timetable? I'm sure that you guys have seen the question about delegation, and you can testify that sometimes it do come like the way we are discussing right now. So what are the things you need to consider when you're coming up with a timetable? You know, the things that you need to consider, number one is holidays. How many holidays do you have? Second is experience. You cannot put the foundation baker or the newly appointed baker. Of course, theory, but practical is very crucial. It's very crucial. So, tell you, we can see our new way. So, you need to make sure that you, you consider holiday experience. Apart from that, staffing. How many nurses or workers that you have? How many workers do I have? I think I've got 10 workers. That is staffing. Then the other thing is shift. Nima shift yanga na lapanga. Na lapanga fe follow off or na lapanga morning shift, afternoon, na night. Depending with the manpower that you have. So guys, do we have anyone with a question? And if you want to, to become good in leadership and management, put each and everything you learn into practice. Because leadership is there to, to change your perception. Leadership is there in order to dismantle your... is there to dismantle our brain our way of thinking from the community way, from the community perspective to somewhere where, you know, someone who's learning, right? So about delegation, if you want to become an expertise, follow those principles before you ask anyone to do the job for you. Communication, follow those type of communication, the method of communication, the channel of communication. About change, follow them. Okay. Leadership style. Follow them. If you are married, if you have got children, try to practice each leadership style at home before you write the exam. And you're going to understand that at the end of the day, you become an expert, even when you finish your nursing career. Because leadership and management, as long as you, you are a nurse, Apart from just being a nurse, as long as you are a human being, you basically need to know it. Staffing, well, staffing, we simply just said, that's, it talks about how many manpower that you have. Because, you know, ngaure panga timetable, if you are still considered, we should not go to the bank, maybe you will be able to do the timetable. Then again, when you talk about conflict management, conflict management, for, for instance, you have a dispute between you and your friend, or maybe you and your spouse. 
try by all means to use a uh, resolution method avoidance accommodation compromise try all those things but for now i'm allowing now questions to come in before i go i just wanted us to discuss this this morning so anyone with a question Any question under delegation? So just a recap, we talked about uh, the definition for delegation. We spoke about uh, the principles for delegation and we simply said, number one, we have determined what to delegate. Choose the right person to delegate to. Uh, defining the employee's responsibility and authority, clarify the desired result, and follow up. Then we also spoke about the advantages and the disadvantages for delegation. Lastly, but not the least, we spoke about uh, the qualities of uh, a good word manager. And under that, we said intelligent, does not mean that someone should be knowledgeable quite a bit data, but someone needs to have a good common sense. And we spoke about um, persuasiveness, whereas a manager needs to have the capacity to win others so that whenever you make a decision, they will be able to follow you to simply say, ah, I never boss you up and guys, let us fall. Then we also spoke about uh, uh, judgment. As a manager, you need to know the strength and the weakness of the people that you work with. And we spoke about integrity, where we said you need to set standards which command respect of others on the world as well as yourself. You don't do things that are not right. And of course, we have seen this has been broken many times. Like, uh, you discover that the word is not respected because of what the in-charge is doing. Maybe the in-charge gets medicine. Even the nurses, they'll begin to get medicine because they follow what the in-charge is doing. If the in-charge does not respect client, even the nurses won't respect client. So make sure as an in-charge, set standard which command respect of others as well as your fellow employees. Then also spoke about loyalty where you defend your, your workers against external forces. And last, we talk about the things you need to consider when you're coming up with a timetable. When giving examples, are they always supposed to be in line with nursing or you can talk of anything? Okay, thank you so much, Sister Memory, for that question. Uh, when you are writing examples, now remember that the reason why I've said you give examples, an example is an illustration that is going to show the examiner to say, you know what you're talking about, okay? So when you're explaining, because this is nursing, you give examples related to nursing, okay? You give examples related to nursing. What? It's not always that you should be giving examples, but you give examples where appropriately. For, for instance, when you talk about the advantages, Fotemax. What are you doing for Fotemax? You need to show an example. Nanguta wa kwebele. Wabika mwana example. That is going to at least push the motivate na wamaka to simply say, ah, we na isho fi alele mboi. Okay. Any other question? Thank you so much, sister.
Okay, so it seems like we don't have questions at the moment. That's all for today, and uh, may God bless you. And those that are writing exams, because I I want you guys to have a hundred percent pass. As you know, it's not easy to 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 pass but if you put effort you'll pass is if someone tells you to say passing is easy it's not easy it's very hard you need extra effort you need to work extra hard the time that you sleep you cut it and some of you you'll be deferred some of you you stop school, but I encourage you that do not allow uh, the pressure, the adversity that you undergo in life to stop you from becoming whom you want to become. Adversity, they make us to grow. They, they make us understand that uh, for you to become whom you're supposed to become, you need to undergo the challenges. There is no one who is successful who has never undergone adversity in life. Some of you, you can have no fees to pay for your college, for your tuition. You can be deferred because you failed. Uh, there are many things you are going to undergo in your nursing journey. But I strongly encourage you that do not give up. Do not even for a millisecond give up. Because you are this close to your success. You are this close to your success. The only thing that you need is your mind. Your mind is the most powerful weapon that can change the way you think about yourself and about the future. You do not allow a short-term pleasure to disrupt or to disconnect from long-term happiness majority of students they have failed within along their line of studying others they are drinking recklessly you know it differs but you can still make it if you drink make sure you control yourself remember the future is what is important what lies ahead of you is what is important. Remember your mom. Remember your father. Remember your husband. Remember that person that is giving you the money to simply say, go and study. Make them proud. Make them proud. No matter how rich you are, you are always remember to simply say, I need to make 